Welcome to Arcade Couch, the best place to join your friends to get your gaming goodness every Monday usually, but this one's posting possibly very late Monday slash early Tuesday. I don't really know. We're recording late Monday because we pushed it because of the Ubisoft event, which we'll get to a little bit later in the show. Uh, my name's Zombie. Blight. Joining me on the couch this week. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I went over this and Ash was staring at me. He's like, I know what you're thinking, Dom, because we went over this just the other week when Karen wasn't here but he probably didn't listen to the episode. So he's unaware <laughs> of the meme that's currently happening. So he, now I'll bring it up again because we'll, we'll go over it. Now, Kieran, what happens if I introduce you first? Like, what would you say? I'm like, oh, Kieran's here. Uh, hey guys, what's up? What's going on? Something like that? Or yep, I don't point know. Point or, <laughs> or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, we brought, I brought up last week how I can't really introduce you first because... You, uh, what your thing is to usually copy what Ash says oh, or build that's off Ash. Fair. That's and if fair. I introduce that's you fair. first, you usually go, ah, uh, flaming hot ball. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because it's so true. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, we had, and we had a discussion about how oh, everyone reacts oh. to the, the order of intros on podcasts and how Ash is usually the first to introduce because he always just um, has some hot take he throws out or something. And you usually something. react to what he says. But the times yeah, I introduce yeah, you yeah. first, you go, ah! <laughs> <laughs> generally, because, no, it's generally also because I, I, I don't think about what I'm going to say. I know actually sometimes prepares what he's going to say, his mental headspace. He's a I true comedian. Prepare, and then I'm also like, I don't know who he's introducing first. Uh, do I yeah. need to be that person that steps up and has something to kind of, yeah, it's just... Mm. Mm -hmm. I feel like when we did like a Studio Ghibli show, which is you should go listen to it from Studio Ghibli's Anime and Wonders, I could kind of chuck it out random directions and it was less weird. But there's something about this show. <laughs> or if I throw the <laughs> ball at you first, you go, no, <laughs> no, I can't, can't do it. Uh, so anyway, uh, joining me on the couch this week, uh, not Kieran, we'll, we'll get to him. Ashley Hobley. Hey, Dylan, excited to be here for another week of V3. That's right. Also here, Kieran Martin. Hey, Dylan, excited to hear you talk about the reviews you provided this week. <laughs> yeah. I did it, guys. I did <laughs> Good it. Good job. That was you did the podcast. Yeah. The podcast well. Uh, so today on the show, oh, we're going to be going over all the news from Ubisoft Ford, as I said, and also the Devolver Direct. That is basically the core of the show. However, first, two reviews to go over. Uh, we'll start with the one that's a little bit late, but it's going up this week. Uh, Desperados 3... Um, this is currently on my short list for goatee material, which I'm surprised by because it's Ooh. not like I'm a, uh, I wouldn't say I'm a Desperate massive fan thing. of, or de yeah, I've never played it. Hey, let's get that out of the way. Desperados 3 is a prequel. However, instead of doing that thing most games do these days where they like reboot a franchise and they ditch the number and they're like, it's just Desperados, you know, subtitled something they're like, we'll call it Desperados 3 but it is a prequel and it's not made by the original developer anymore because THQ Nordic brought the rights to the franchise a couple of years ago. But whatever, it's the third one, but also takes place before the other three games because there's Desperados 1, I found out, Desperados 2, and then the third one wasn't called 3. So this is technically the fourth, called the three, that's actually the first. Get that around your head scopes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but anyway, it's a um, it's real, -times, real time tactics game. So, uh, in case you don't know what that is, it's, you know, your typical tactic stuff, isometric view. However, everything's happening. There's no, like, you don't take turns between you and the enemies or whatever. Like, enemies walk around. Uh, like, guard patrols will just walk. And there is an ability that lets you pause the game to input a certain command. You can be like, you can pause it and be like, everyone walk here and get in this bush or whatever. But... Um, it's not, it's, you don't take in turns. Like the second you unpause, every, the world continues and they, they just pull off that action and whatever else. So that's where the, uh, some more of the, the tactical elements come in, because especially when you get into later, later levels and you've got these massive, the maps in this game are absolutely huge for the type of game it is. I don't think I've played a tactics game with as much map, <laughs> just with the size of the maps, <laughs> plus also the different routes and ways you can go about uh getting to your goal and often they'll be like here's three different ways you can complete this mission it doesn't really matter which one you go about it and there doesn't seem to be a plus or negative to either side it just gives you options to kind of uh, play them how you want to um but it's 
it is the most fun I've had playing a stealth game uh, since like the reboot of the Hitman stuff. And it, it, it reminds me a lot of that because there is a lot of silly sort of stealth stuff you could do. There's lots of way, different ways to pull off uh, takedowns and whatever else. And when you pull off a good, um, when you spend half an hour in one room trying to solve <laughs> the puzzle and then it, you eventually solve it. And you, you may only be trying to like get around four or five people or whatever. And it may seem impossible, but the second you figure out how to do it without being seen, you're like, oh, that's, it gives you a real sense of uh, accomplishment, which is quite good. Um, it's being set in the wild west, you have a group of characters that have sort of different abilities, but the, the main one called John Cooper, the main character is, um, your typical cowboy. So he just has like two guns. He has a knife for stealth kills. You can throw that sort of thing, whatever else you do have a, another character that has a fucking shotgun, which I use like once in the entire game, because I'm like, this thing never seems applicable to any scenario. Cause anytime I shoot anyone with it, it's like, and yeah. Believe it or not, someone heard that and they're all running down here. <laughs> Another guy's gun, you could get it, you could get away with it a little bit. You like you could kind of guesstimate the like, oh, the other enemies are all the way up there. They may not hear it because like I'm at the bottom of this hill or whatever. And sometimes they uh they wouldn't. I'm like, okay, cool. Shoot some of a shotgun. Whole fucking map here is apparently, so you can't get away with that. But um, not to go on it too long. Go read my review, explosionnetwork.com. Um, what I, I can't remember what I decided on. Nine, I think is what I decided on really good it's on pcs the xboxes the ps4s i think that's it took me th nearly 30 hours to beat and if you want to complete all the extra challenges you'd probably get like 100 out of this game 100 hours out of this game probably it's absolutely ridiculous like, it was one of those games where i was like oh this will be like 8 to 12 hours like you know eight missions or something <laughs> like that eight to 12 hours easy platinum yeah something like that and i was like I kept playing. I'm like, this, it ended up being 16 missions, but it just some of those levels take hours to beat. Like it's, it's ridiculous to be like, I spent hours. And when you, when you, the other cool thing is when you get to the end of a level, it has like, it shows you a map of the, uh, the level, but not like an isometric view you've been looking at, just like a general sort of map. And then it shows all the dots of your characters and all the dots of every single enemy AI on the map. And then it shows it at like a sped up value. And you can literally see your character as you move them, plus all the other <laughs> enemy characters moving around in the routes they were going. And then it also shows you every single time you died, every single time you quick saved, quick loaded, everything. And then there'll be times where I'm like, obviously trying to scope out an area and figure out how the hell I'm supposed to get in there and not get it noticed. And you just see these dots of my characters just like looping around this one building for like 10 minutes straight as I'm basically like just clicking around it, clicking around it going, what the fuck do I do? Dead, dead, dead. And then down the bottom, have a timer. It'd be like, yeah, it took you like two and a half hours to beat this. I'll be like, oh, <laughs> it's only a very long time, but sure. Um, and the second thing I got up is the Death Stranding PC review. Um, I played it again. Obviously, I talked about Death Stranding a lot last year, so don't need to spend too much time on it because go listen to all that stuff. Go listen to anything around Game of the Year time. Go listen to Platinum Explosion. Probably talked about it a whole bunch, presumably, um, for months. Mm -hmm. Anything from like out. the mid mid November to like yeah. mid December? That's probably a good probably. month's worth of potential talking points around it yeah and the the pc ver the pc version doesn't add a lot new um the key pc centric stuff to excite those that care about it is um the ps4 version only did 30 frames this one has up to 240 fps Ooh. um Ooh. But yeah, yeah. Now, now you're like, oh, no, you're going to get, get started for that. Yeah, you can watch now Norman read a shower in 240 yeah. frames per second. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and I would say... Watch that, all uh, those droplets roll yeah, down no. his chest. It's, it's, it's <laughs> actually quite weird. Just his chest. I'm, one thing that stood out to me while playing it, and I put this out in my review, is that it's... But it feels like the whole game was designed for 30 frames in mind, obviously being made for the PlayStation. Definitely. And then... The second I'm noticing it playing it at above 60 constantly, just it seemed easier. Like it seemed less slower and rigid and just the way the game is meant to feel. It kind of felt like it made the game faster because of literally over double frame rate. <laughs> it, can, it can feel that, especially when games are optimized for their specific frame rate. So 
30 frames with the PlayStation 4. So some developers use that as a tool to be able to yeah increase how tense a game is, increase how their game feels. Um, and it can often mean you break games that aren't designed to kind of extend it or kind of change that up a little bit. So that's interesting, actually, quite a lot for Death Stranding. Um, yeah, because you, you think about I'm- it, it's a very slow game, you know. Yes, 100%. You know, you, you're literally carrying around these items and it, it, the, the 30 frames really didn't affect that sort of game. 30 frames is probably fine. Like you play this, if you don't have an amazing PC, you can probably play this at 30 frames and just be like, whatever, because that's how it was on the PlayStation. Um, I wouldn't say 60 frames breaks it. Like it didn't make it like, oh my God, this is making the game so silly easy now. But it was definitely several moments where I'm like, I, I didn't click on it, onto it for a while. Just something in my head kept being like, something weird like he seems to be moving different or you know something like that and then i I started being like i guess it's the the frame rate or like the well it's the breakdown of um like it's the breakdown of how more frames works is the fact that your brain and your eyes are getting more information on the screen so things that you previously only get maybe one frame of you're now getting 10 frames of um, so you're seeing more and able to pick up on more things. It's it's they do tests on um, how, if it's easier in like a Counter Strike game to shoot somebody with higher frame rate, and the answer is yes, yes, it yes. is because you're yeah. getting you're getting more information from the game um, to be able to do so. Yeah, it's one of those things that's like if you just show people footage, they're like, I don't see any difference. But if you actually play something at a different frame rate, you may not visually pick up on it or even like actually pick up pick up what is happening different, but like your brain will be picking up the stuff no matter what. So it's like, it does make a difference even if you can't tell. Um, and also, so I, I played like, I played like a couple hours of keyboard and mouse, um, any combat scenario in this game, even though there's not that many combat scenarios, but when you do need to do them, keyboard and mouse makes the combat in this game just like super easy, obviously. Cause I was just like headshotting everyone with darts left, right and center yes. within, yep. within a second. Like the reaction time obviously goes up with keyboard and mouse plus over 60 frames. So I was just like, bang, bang, bang. I was like, this game's so much easier. Not, not like the combat was hard in the original, but I'm like, damn, this is now so much easier. Um, and also when you're sneaking through any BT areas, although I played the majority of the game uh, with controller, with my Xbox controller, um, when you're playing it with keyboard and mouse, you could just like, makes it way easier to, to hide and seek, uh, hide and crawl because you can re-key bind stuff to make it easier for you. So you can key bind holding both your shoulders to one button instead of having to hold in both controller uh, buttons on the back of the controller, which made a big difference as well. Um, it does look great, though. I wouldn't say it like... Uh, so my monitor is only 2K, so I didn't get to test like 4K, 60 frames. I didn't get to do the magical big test, unfortunately, because I don't have the ability to. But 2K above 60, it looked great. It looked a little bit better than playstation but not enough to the point where i'm like if you have the option definitely pay double the price that you could probably buy the playstation version for now yes. and pay yeah. that much more to play it on pc for the slight increase in frame it's, rate in a game that you don't really need it in you know is the community just as quote-unquote wholesome um in the pc version as it was i think that was the nicest thing about the playstation version is that there is definitely a general feeling of the everybody's trying to help each other there was lots of you know helpful things in that game there weren't too many people that or i didn't even see too many things that were trolling or incorrect um so was um, was the game well i mean when i was playing it obviously the only people playing it were media also as true. well yeah. so um everyone within that group was doing everything right i would presume it would be the same on pc i don't i don't they they changed it so you can't really troll anyway like on the playstation they people kept a few people kept dumping vehicles in in front of this certain area so they'd like block up the entrance for for people and then they basically fixed that like a week or so after launch anyway and they're like you can no longer do that in that area because that was the one spot people figured out they could troll and they're like no we're, we're taking that away you can no longer do that get the hell out of here with that sort of shit um no, it's good. It's uh, if you haven't played the game before, as far as I'm concerned, it is one of the best games of the generation. Um, definitely my favorite game of last year for sure. One of the best PS4 games. So it's like if you don't own a PlayStation, play it. There's really no reason not to. One of the best games. It's amazing. It's um, it's it's just so different to everything else. And as it's so funny because I went in going like, oh man, like I wonder if this will be as fun to play quote-unquote fun whatever uh as much as an experience (laughs) playing for a second time kind of thing and again i was just like yeah i'm 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 still enjoying this because i just find the whole experience it's sort of relaxing just 
you know, making these deliveries and I, I kept stopping to do photo mode shit and uh, do whatever else. I, I wasn't going ham doing the extra uh, side deliveries this time. I was just doing the story stuff so I could so I could progress further. So I was moving a lot faster through the story. Um, the only side mission stuff I was stopping to do was the only actual new content in this apart from uh, they added a very hard difficulty whatever the games are hard um is they got these <laughs> half-life missions in the game which kind of get spread throughout different points um there's a total of six of them i got to see four in my early access period to do the review um i will have a guide up after the game's released on 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 where to find these and how to find the uh, objects because each one sends you out to find a uh, companion cube that's the the thing you've got to find and then deliver it and you get a different item for each one some of them are silly like the first one you get is just gordon freeman's glasses it's like oh yeah you can make, make <laughs> sand with those um and then the only one really good one i've got so far is that you get the gravity guns from half-life alex and they they let you pull cargo from anywhere within 15 meter 15 meters around you which at first i was like i don't see how useful this may be that seems because kind I'm of like it's it's not very far however when you're walking around a BT infested area, the distance between you and 15 meters across there when there's a BT in your way, it's actually super helpful to just be like, and yoink. And as soon as the first time I entered a BT infested area with those gloves, I was like, these things actually make a huge difference. Like again, doesn't break the game. Certainly does make the BT areas a lot easier in my opinion than the, the PS4 version. And it just looks cool to constantly be like force pulling up cargo everywhere you go. Any button you tap, is just like zoing, 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 zoing. So that's really cool. Yeah. Did you have many areas? Like I know it's still, there's still some areas in the normal in the game when it was initially released like this, but did you have many areas where you could tell not many other people had explored yet and you were maybe the first person to do uh, stuff in? Yeah. The, the snow area, which is like one of the last um, areas of the map you uncover, uh, uncovered. There wasn't, when I was linking up the, the chiral network there, there was only, I think I only saw one or two other people ever placing stuff there. I'm like, and compared to every other area in the game, we're all spotting heaps of different players and stuff. So I think that was kind of the, the, the reaching point. But at the same time, I understand that because I kind of knew, I, as I said, I was rushing there, quote unquote rushing by just doing the main quest where, and I got there in like half the time I did when I played it on PS4 because I wasn't spending much time messing around this this time apart from stopping for random photo mode op opportunities so i could understand why other people may not have got there as fast because there's a certain mi mission you reach where i know a lot of people are like oh my god this snow shit it is because the snow is like the, the that's the it literally sends you up into the mountains and goes all right and um come back down and go back up with another delivery and you're like oh my god please <laughs> stop it's taking forever <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was Death Stranding PC review. I gave it a 9.5, which is the same score I gave the PS4 version because it's just as good with a couple new bells and whistles and extra PC features that uh, are cool, but don't like, you know, fr turn it into a whole new game or anything like that. Check out all those things. Explosion of the Cop. All right, let's get into the, the news for this week. So, as I said, we're just going to go over the, the two um, conference thingies, whatever the hell we call them, E3 Week 76, whatever we're talking about. So we'll start with Devolver's uh, fourth. That's what we're on, isn't it? Fourth year in a row, direct, whatever they're called. I think it's a, yeah, third or fourth. I can't even fucking remember. Um, so firstly, before we talk about what was actually shown, because there was only a couple of games, really. Um... Is, does anyone else watch these shows in full every year or no? No, this is my no, first year watching. No. Okay. <laughs> See, because as far as I'm concerned, the reason I care to watch these is for the presentation more so than the the games. Because for the last couple of years, ever since Devolver started doing these, they started out with this joke conference the first year, which was great. And then they were like, they decided to do another one the next year. And they're like, fuck, I don't know what we do now. So then they, they made it even sillier up until the point where w the last one, they killed uh, Nina, who's the CEO of Devolver. It's an act, 
it's an actress. It's, it's she's not the real yes. CEO. However, yes, it's funnier. Yeah. What makes all that funnier is in during PlayStation's future gaming event where they cut, cut a whole bunch of developers and uh, stuff talking about the power of the PS5. She was in there credited as the CEO of Devolver talking about how much <laughs> she's looking forward to the PS5 even though she's not the real CEO of Devolver. And I just love to imagine that PlayStation like emailed Devolver and was like, "Hey, can you get her to like film a bit or so, I don't know, it's weird. Uh, but in the last year's one, they uh, killed her. Someone came out on stage and shot her to death. Uh, then they strapped her into like a Matrix chair and uploaded her mind to, I don't know, the Matrix. And now in this year's direct, she's basically a robot being told how to say stuff with data being sent to her mind. It's absolutely nonsense. Absolutely B-grade movie nonsense. And I love I love. <laughs> every second of it that that's that's the thing i feel like you either get the humor that they're going for with these or you don't get the humor and you're not going to find it funny i find it hilarious i love it I, anytime they go super over the top violent as well and someone dies by blowing up into a million, million pieces amazing love every second of it um ash you said this is the first time you've watched my these in full what, what, what did you make yes. of the show itself uh yeah it was weird uh, clearly, a send up of a Nintendo Direct as well. Obviously, with the yeah. the, the the screens at the end, all very much like a Direct. Uh, you know, it very much played up into modern times where everybody's having their own events and uh, everybody's making announcements, even making announcements before things are ready. Yep, things that will never come. Yep, uh, which we know is all too common. Uh, so yeah, it was it was a good time. Uh, it, it felt like it. I don't know. It felt like this might be the last one. <laughs> Like this. No. What? No. Really? Why would you say this? Won't allow it. No, it just had a nice ending feel. But she's broke out now. No, everybody's nice and safe. Yeah. But next year they get to do a send up of the first year of new video game consoles. However, they want to do that. I guess. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Maybe she retires. Maybe. To an old farm. <laughs> and then someone comes, someone's got a grudge and has to come back. <laughs> Calls her out of retirement. It's so funny because like- Someone's been like, preparing for the last year, just like in the gym constantly. Do you uh, remember- she, like, Massive arms. <laughs> <laughs> she like John Wicks and is like, I'm back. Like, yes, they like come back out of retirement. Like, yeah, that'd be, that'd be pretty that. funny. Did you watch this thing in full, Kieran, or- uh, no, I literally had watched through just the trailers and stuff. I'm, I keep meaning to go back and watch it because I do know the meta narratives and the overall kind of presentation of the shows is really good and really funny. So um, it's on the list of things to go back and do, but I have not yet. It's so meta and so in depth now that they had to show like a two and a half minute catch up of the story before the stream yep. started. <laughs> like that's how much is going on now. I'm looking forward to when there's like a 10 minute video explaining what the fuck's going on before they announce fucking Hotline Miami 3 Just finally. In case, similar to what they released like for like installments of games or like IGN or different places. Where a, Here's a, ca- a 10 minute catch up of what you might have missed in the past games. Yep. Just to remind you. And then yeah, Devolver does the same thing for go their uh, shows. That'd be. Go. It's, my, it's more confusing than most games. So. Uh, all right, so let's go through what they showed. So the first thing they showed was Shadow Warrior 3. Um, I don't have any care for this franchise, and I don't particularly have any care for this game either. Um, I'd never really paid any attention to any of the previous ones until I saw the trailer for this, and I was like, I don't know. This kind of seems weirdly stereotypical <laughs> slash maybe possibly racist and i google the game and then i find out there was heaps of arguments about that when previous entries had come out and i was like okay i guess it's not just me but here's a third one so shrug i don't know i don't know how i feel about it to be honest <laughs> <laughs> ash how do you feel about shadow warrior 3 i mean yeah it looks silly and over the top and i know i guess it could be construed as offensive but i don't know there seems to be some sort of market for it so yeah well i mean it's got decent reviews in the past so it's basically doom is what they're trying to be they're like doom but not doom. yeah doom but yeah but, but that's ninjas. the thing right it feels like they kind of like with serious sam fall being on the same kind of presentation they're Oof. both very similar style games um and they're both very you can see where they got their quote-unquote inspiration for their game design from so it's like man Okay, you got both of these on it. It feels like there's not heaps well, of diversity. Well, I guess in your Shadow point. Warrior is like, it, it wishes it was Doom. And then uh, Serious Sam to me has always been, it wishes it was, Wish du- it was Doom. Du- Nukem. Yeah. So that's the yep, yep. correlation there. Yeah, well, do you care for this one at all, Karen? 
Not at all. Not at all. Some of like the, uh, I guess, quite a great mechanics for it, where he was like pulling like the saw blades into people. I thought looked kind of cool, but other than that, not nothing too special. Yeah. Uh, so next thing we got was finally a release date for Fall Guys. Yes, boy. Uh, so it's coming out on August yeah. 4th for PC and PS4. Been looking forward to this one since PAX last year, where um lined up for what felt like nearly an hour to play one game, and it was well worth it because it was a lot of fun. Um, this is... I always just keep descri- describing it in case you don't know what it is. It's like the kind of pitch game as this Battle Royale or whatever. But to me, it's Wipeout. Like not the game, but the uh, game show, which is a rip. Wipeout was a rip yes. off of all those Japanese game shows. Um, so if you know any of those crazy Takeshi's Japanese. Castle. Yeah, yeah. Takashi's Castle or just Wipeout or whatever. If you know any of those shows, that's what Fall Guys is to me. Because it's just you play, you start with 99 players or whatever it is of these yeah. weird cartoon characters and you do one challenge. And at the end of that, a whole bunch uh, drop off and then next go to round two and then round three. And I think it goes up to round four or something. And then you, you vie for the being the ultimate winner. I got second, I think, when I played in that pack. And I was so disappointed because I was like, I was like, damn, I. I you know, I got to that last round. I'm like, damn, I'm going to win it. And this is going to be such a cool Twitter moment. <laughs> you know, like, I get, <laughs> get high switch on. No. But it lost a damn. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun. You played this at <laughs> PAX as well, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, we did all you, played it. It was no, great. No, you played it different uh, to me. I, um, you lined up with Buddy in that afterwards, didn't you? I think different Oh, time. yeah, that's right. Yeah. I think different times. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of fun. Looking forward to it. Very sad to learn that you can't keep two of these file guys together because they'll lead each other. Uh, that whole <laughs> segment with you, it was brilliant. Uh very happy and uh, yeah i would i'm looking forward to it august 8th right it's not too far away no not too far away at all have you seen this one before Kieran? sorry rip all battle I royals have. i guess i have it it gives you that vibe of uh gang beasts with the uh, character designs and being able to wear the little costumes and stuff like that so i think this looks like a lot of fun looks like it's going to be great maybe even some good streams yeah it does look like a lot, a lot of fun. Not Apex Killer. They can live and be on their own little barrel of. I don't know. It looks like something. they're very, look very similar to me. They could mm. really. I don't know if they can both live together. Listen, mm. once. The, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so next <laughs> game was something else I've been looking forward to getting a release date for, which is Carry On. Uh, Carry On. It comes out July twenty third for the Switch, the Xbox, and the PCs. Um. So I've, I've done a Let's Play for this last year, played it, the, the demo. A lot of fun. It's it's a riff on the old school, uh, like Metroid or whatever you want, to, those sorts of games. But instead of controlling the space marine or the hero fighting against back against the monster, you're actually playing the monster in this one, uh, which sounds like it would be a super easy game. You just go around and you, you kill a lot of people. But in my sh- even with my hour with that demo last year, I quickly quickly discovered that if you enter a room with enough people with rocket launchers, you'll die pretty fast. So um, it, there's times where you got to be stealthy and there's other times where you just walk in with a whole bunch of people who have fuck all weapons and you just absolutely destroy them and you get bigger as this, this monster. Um, and it just feels really good to control. Like it's, it's hard to explain, but it kind of just slings itself across the these walls and just bounces around naturally. It's in the slink into these little ducks and, and stuff. You, you actually feel like a predator playing it. So um, I'm keen to play more of this one. Is this anyone else's jam or just my chocolate soup? Mm, it looks, looks like your kind of, your kind of game. It does not, does not appeal to me that much. Ash? Yeah, I'm, I might give it a go seeing it's going to be on Game Pass, so, uh, which was surprising not coming to PS4. I, I don't know if that'd been confirmed or I been announced prior to. No, I don't think so. I can't remember, though. I know it definitely hadn't been announced for which, PS4 so far, but they could have announced it last yeah. second. I don't know. Um, yeah. Then the, the next thing they announced, uh, I don't really care for this, so... Uh, Olija, Olija, I think is. I'm not sure how you actually say, it. but um, mm. so it says it's a game about Faraday's quest, a man shipwrecked, then trapped in the mysterious country of Terraphage, armed with a legendary harpoon. He and other castaways try to leave this hostile country to return to their homelands. Uh, it's going to PC and Nintendo Switch later this year. Uh, it's got this pixel art, sort of Metroidvania type thing, I guess. By watching it, it seems like all of the combat. And puzzles will will involve having to master this harpoon. Um, it's in the trailer you see him fighting against another like enemy that has a, a similar harpoon weapon. It seemed that potentially looked like it could have been quite hard. I saw that like for two seconds and was like, that looks like a thing that would make me quite angry to do. But here we are. Um, <laughs> anyone, anyone care so for you're this? totally gonna do it. 
No. Um, I think it it looks better on Nintendo, like for as a Nintendo Switch game, in my opinion. Like I think games like this work really well on Nintendo Switch overall. Um, I couldn't really imagine sitting on my PC and playing it, but yeah, looks okay. Ash, look fine. <laughs> Didn't really grab me, so yeah. yeah. That, that's how. It, that's <laughs> yeah, that's to say. Summed up what I feel. Uh, so next thing was serious Sam, serious Sam Four. As I was talking about, I don't really care for this franchise. That's all I've got to say. I've never cared for it. I don't care for this. It comes out August, Stadium, PC. I think we're covered. Let's just, I don't think anyone cares for the series. Sam. Uh, and then no. the last thing they announced was just a funny lol. I've downloaded it. I haven't had a chance to play it yet because I've had to prioritize other things. But um, Devolver Land Expo. So it's it's an actual game slash experience, I guess, that you can download now for free on Steam. Uh, it was developed by Flying Wild Hog, uh, who developed... Um, uh, what the fuck was Shadow the first Warrior. game? Shadow, Shadow Warrior, that's it. Uh, and it's a first. It's described as a first-person marketing simulator set within an abandoned convention center after the annual Devolver Digital Game Expo was mysteriously cancelled. Break into the convention center and avoid the advanced security systems to watch and retrieve the remnants of gameplay trailers and promotional video packages from all the games featured in Devolver Direct and other secrets lost in the Expo's cancellation. So I don't know how long it is. I'm sure it's a bit silly. The, the trailer makes it just like... They're running in the fall guys and all other sorts of random yeah. things. Like it, it looks like a movie tying game. Yeah. <laughs> Almost. Basically. That quality. But, but I want to play it though. You know, like the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> there's, the, there's the big difference for you. But yeah, I I definitely want to give that a go just because it seems like it could be fun. I don't don't know if it's twenty minutes or an hour of though, so don't know. Um all right, so that was that was Devolver Direct for twenty twenty. They didn't have that much to be honest. Most of the cool stuff was, for me personally, but the release dates. The show itself. Well, the the show itself. They don't usually yeah, I mean, have a lot. Yeah. yeah. They don't, they don't usually have they don't a lot. They don't usually. I feel like they had a little bit more than that, usually, though. I feel like they might. I, th- I would agree with that. Just a couple more things. I feel like they didn't have Like what? This was four, five games? Five games? Yeah. And like Fall Guys was just a release date. Carrion was just a release date. So knock those two off, kind of. You know, like... Yeah. Um, it was fine. I, the, the, the show itself was great. So that's what I watched it for, really. <laughs> so I don't really care too much. Um, all right. So let's get into the big one. Ubisoft Ford, July 2020. It's important to note the date <gasps> because they did announce at the end another of this one. that they are doing another one later in the, the year. Um, as I, I'm, I will note, because I wrote it in my fucking news story because I feel like it's important to point out because it's a weird time. But Ubisoft... Two hours before this went up, tweets out, hey, we're not going to be... I don't have the tweet in front of me, so I'm misquoting. But they're like, hey, we're not going to be addressing any of the current uh, allegations and all that sort of stuff that's happening in Ubisoft at the moment because the show's pre-recorded and we just don't have time to fix it. Which, in my opinion, bullshit. Because these alleg- these the Ubisoft started like three weeks ago all this stuff started happening. They started, uh, they kicked off the dude, the creative director from Assassin's Creed like three weeks ago. And then just this past week, they've had another three top executives, including the like chief creative officer who literally gets to say what games happen and don't happen at Ubisoft. They've, he's been kicked off. They're, they're dropping creatives and executives left light and center like fucking flies. And this has been happening for three weeks. They could have had uh, Yeez Gilmore. Yeah. Um, they could have had him record something edit it into the start off you go to the races you know like how hard it is didn't it even to need rec- to be it didn't even need to be edited into the start it could have just literally been a separate video that they just played beforehand yeah i mean like it like it was it's not that yeah. hard to quickly make a response video or even if it was just a basic you know going over it and be like hey we are not cool with this at ubisoft and we're doing what we can to yeah no, um, get rid of it from my company. Because, yeah. like, I know there are some people out there who I think are going too far. I'm like, this should have been cancelled. I don't think it should have been cancelled because, like, there is a lot of fucked up shit happening at Ubisoft, obviously, especially in the high end and the the big the big dogs there. They're off dropping like, like flies. Hopefully they continue to drop like flies. Get the fuck out of there. The reason this event should have continued and the reason it did happen is because there's still thousands of other developers that have worked hard on games. And this was their chance to uh, to show it off and wh- whatever else. So it's good. However, I do definitely feel like they fumbled the ball a lot by not having something to say at the start, which would have just been like, okay, cool. 
It still happens. We can all move on. And I'll say overall, apart from what I'm about to say about Watch Dogs Legion, which I think is fucking weird, but apart from that, I would say this Ubisoft uh, Ford event was in a different world where all this other stuff was happening, would have actually been praised for the most part because it was the most diverse uh, group of people that have actually had in a Ubisoft event ever talking about their games. Usually it's white dude, white dude, white dude, white dude. And here comes G's Gamalt to talk about white dude stuff. And that's like how the event usually happens. Unless they get Aisha Tyler out to host it and they go, look, eh? She ain't what? Yeah. Like, <laughs> representation. <laughs> yeah, the representation. Like, uh, okay. You got the one over there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, but the, so in a different world, I would say people would have been like, yeah, this was a good event. Diverse group of people. But a, a, a lot of people I could tell watching on Twitter, they were like, this is weird to watch because they didn't address the situation. We could address the situation and we could have all enjoyed the games. Um, does anyone have any, Ash, have any thoughts on that? No, whole? I think he's kind of sums it up uh yeah I, I, it might be even like a legal thing they're not allowed to like put out a statement at the moment until they've finished up some sort of paperwork or releases or <laughs> um, there might be ndas and stuff involved so we don't know unfortunately uh probably a bit rude to us but well it, it's a bit weird to speculate as to why they didn't uh you know at the moment but yeah I didn't have too much of an issue with how they handled it. They didn't need to say much. Could have been less than 30 seconds. Hey, we're aware of what's happening. Um, today's the day to celebrate the game. Is we're going to fix our shop. All right. The statement literally it's almost somebody- like if they put out a tweet that said, hey, we're not going to talk about that in this thing, that would have been enough, right? If they said no. If they, oh. no. <laughs> They could have put that time not <laughs> writing a statement into writing an actual statement, and then that would have been a better use of their time, I think. Because most people were like, what? And I woke up to watch this, I'm like, what? Because I expected there to be something. And I think I set my up for I set myself up for expectation based on the events that got pushed because of Black Lives Matter stuff, and then every one of those events had something edited into the start, even if they were already pre-recorded. Like all the ones mm. that Greg Miller did for the Gorilla Collective, all pre-recorded. They delayed them for a week. And then in that week, they pre-recorded something to tape onto the the start of it, where it was like, hey, Black Lives Matter. Yeah, great. Donate to this. Blah, 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 blah. We're stand by you. Back to the show. Let's talk about video games. And that's what they did. And so did the uh, Future Gaming Show. So did the whatever else. What the fuck happened? The million things that happened that week. So it's it's I had the precedent set for me. And then Ubisoft was like, yeah, but like our games aren't political, so neither is our stream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Um, Kieran, do you have any? No, I think you've covered it pretty well. I am pretty in agreement. Even if, you know what, even if they had just had a fate, like Eve's just as a just a recorded thing, so there is a face of Ubisoft saying we're standing up mm-hmm. and we're doing something about this. Because I think the more the thing that's worse about the statement on Twitter is the statement on Twitter is a faceless thing. Like there's it's it's just a it reads as just like it reads as just quote unquote PR jargon. Like it's just it there's is. no yeah exactly. But there's not no saying humanity anything. behind it. Why not? <laughs> like it's- it, there's no kind of. There's no human humanity behind it for people to connect to and kind of be like, yeah, yeah, cool, we understand. Where it's like, you know, if Eve's had just got to, even if it was the role to say, hey, we can't say anything about this right now, but we are working to make Ubisoft a better company and working through these uh, allegations and events. Yeah. And then that that would have been completely fine. Like, that would have been That's A-OK. Just Most be people like, just wanted something like that. They, like, no, one's, no one was asking for a 10-minute expose into what they're doing to fix yes. it. They yeah. just wanted... 30 seconds or less of acknowledgement. That's it. And I, I think that's a like not asking for much, really, to even just acknowledge. Which I think it's... Which I don't... I don't blame Ubisoft entirely for it because I just think that's how society is right now with these kind of allegations where companies need to make it look like they're quote-unquote detaching themselves from the issue and making it very almost clinical and, and, and procedural with how they're dealing with it. Um, so I think, yeah, it's just how, how human or how our the society problem, is going to deal with this. The problem with that is that video game conferences and events or whatever always have these creative directors and whoever else talking and introducing the game or whatever else. So they're so tied to the way these events usually go down 
to the point that, like, for example, when Assassin's Creed comes onto a show and um, what's his face is isn't there, the creative director who's got pulled off, who's pulled off that project now. It's like even then, if you're in the know, you're like, he's not there because of the thing. But that's why we have this other guy, the producer talking about it you know like not the not the director or whoever so um yeah moments like that all right so let's jump into the games because i got one other weird thing to point out for the rest is just game talk or whatever but so the first thing they sh they show they start the show with watchdogs legions uh legion now they do get to gameplay but the first thing they show off is this uh sh short film called tipping point and it was directed by didn't i write it there somewhere yeah uh Al alberto M milgo M milgo uh, who won an Emmy for his episode of Love's Death and Robots titled Witness. Now, I never watched that show, but I Googled it. And yes, the art style, animation style and everything of this. He also um, was involved with Into the Spider-Verse, um, which comes across very much so with yeah, it's like, like just some of style. the style of choices. Yes. Yeah. yeah, of this, yeah. Uh, so piece. that all adds up. Now, I would say animation style, overall, like whatever's happening in this was cool. The one thing that is weird is that for whatever reason, <laughs> I don't know why, they decided what we'll do to tell the story of this 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 short film is we'll have a cabbie driver uh, doing the monologue over the, the over the top. And what they did for his monologue is they reworked the popular uh, what's the official Wikipedia reason of it. It's called First They Came is a poetic form of prose. Post-war confession first made in Germany in 1946. Uh, and it originally went like, first they came for the communists and I didn't speak up. Then they came for the socialists and I didn't speak yes, up. Yep. First they came for the trade unionists and I didn't speak up. Then they came for the Jews and I did not speak up. Then they came for me and no one was left to speak up. So they reworked that poem to be, first they came for the press, I didn't speak up. First they came for the, whatever it was. All these Protesters and yeah. so far. Yeah, it's, yeah. A it, it's a famous poem uh, for certain reasons. And not because it's a good idea to rework it into your game that you're going to claim is not be political, even though it's clearly political and you're reworking a Nazi Germany war poem into in, into the, the thing. It's one of these things where I'm like, I have so many questions that I'm never going to get answers to. And my biggest one is, why? There are so many things you could do. You could have just done a million things and achieved the same storytelling point about having the cabbie saying something about, because uh, th they chose to do the poem of because this, this, the character story is the cabbie's like obviously driving around. He's seeing lots of wrongdoings happening. And then uh, the one dead sec person like crashes into his cab. And that's the moment where he's like, I'm finally going to stand up and uh, do something. That's the story that the, the short film's telling. So you don't need to do a rework of that poem to tell that story. They could have done it without it. You know, like it's not, intrinsic to to telling it so i think it's weird um i think also think it's very weird to be like because people are starting the show already going now you be soft you should have fucking said something why didn't you say anything and then this starts and they're like why are you reworking the nazi part <laughs> why are you starting with this like i don't understand um karen what are your thoughts on this um, I mean, if you have no thoughts, you can just say that the, the, the no, 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 short no, film it's, was it's, cool. It's, I don't care. It's thought-provoking in ways that, for me, it's interesting that they use the poem. Yes, they probably could have done without it, but also I think there's still very much ways that those that poem kind of applies to today's modern society. Where, and I, this is probably the wrong format to use it because you're doing a futuristic freaking... Um, game that is about kind of protests and stuff like that but you know in, in like the, where we are currently it's about you know how people didn't stand aren't standing up for others because it's not happening to them and i think that does incorporate itself into black lives matter and into those movements as well as well as everything going on with the me too movements um and i think it shows a lot of reflection i don't think i think there's still a lot to learn from that poem even if it was initially written about the nazis and I don't completely hate that they use it. I get what you're saying. My one key argument is just going to be that let's just make another poem that's similar, but not the one about how they took Jews. But to it isn't camps. the exact same. Thing. It's just it reworked. Exact... It's first, like, it's literally you're changed saying one word. This. 
They've changed one fucking word. First, they came for the insert word, and I did not speak up because I was not a insert word. Then they came for the insert word, and I did not speak up because so I was not it's, insert it's word. Words. It's changed one word per fucking whatever you call a but, poem. So what is paragraph. the what is the quote unquote? What's the just because I might not be understanding this? What is the quote unquote insensitive part of this? Because this is about how many people died. That it just. In historical context, it just is. But probably, in it's one of those things context, where it's like, shouldn't we? Let's leave that alone. Let's 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 well, just leave that. Why, poem. why should we leave that alone? This is this is going into a bit of a more uh, philosophical and kind of debate here. But why should that be left alone when we can still look back and learn from that history? When there are still people in today's society that are not standing up for others because it's not happening for them. Why should we leave that thing, that poem alone that has such, you know, when everybody looks back at that, if no matter who you are, if you look back at that poem, look at the context, you instantly understand. You instantly go, I understand what's going on. using it to promote a game where you control fucking grannies and you go punch not police in the dick because they're like, they're not actually cops. No, but it's it's telling a story. It's, no, I I think we're, yeah, obviously we're just all on opposite sides on this particular yeah dylan just wants to be offended because i think you know what i think if it was a direct i think if if it was a if it wasn't a short film and it was a directly a kind of a direct game trailer i would be annoyed i not annoyed but i would i would have more understanding of you but you could say this short film is almost quote unquote an art piece even if it's being used if it was made for a promotional thing it's still somebody's quote unquote art. It, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess, like, sure. I'm sure someone, by the time this is out, by the time I've done editing, I'm sure someone's trying. I'll, yeah, I just quickly someone Googled. Some I'm like, someone, has someone smarter than me wrote why this is and, and explained why this is uh, weird, better than me? And I, I, I couldn't find a. Uh, an article on it fast enough. No, because nobody can. I, I I mean, in the Wikipedia article, it says it deals with, th- the poem deals with themes of persecution, guilt, repentance, and responsibility, which are things they're trying to explain in the short film. So, I mean, it work, it, it works for this short film. And I mean, I, I don't think it's that offensive that they changed a couple of words. I think it's uh, offensive I think, to I, I feel like everybody's Jewish like people. super touchy about anything to do with the Holocaust or anything to do with that time period. Uh, I mean, it's not even directly about that. I mean, it's obviously about the ramping up of, of people standing aside and seeing uh, the Nazi powers, Nazi parties rise to power and how they, the intellectuals and people within, in power in Germany just let them uh, do anything and everything. So, uh, yeah. I get to go too much of a serious. Everything you are saying... I agree with my one hanging out point that we're just going to have to move parts on is that you're like, the poem is about standing up for what's right. Yes. But it's also intrins- intrinsically tied to a point in history where millions of Jewish people died. And you can't separate the history of this from the poem like it's just but why is it but why is it separating so you can't apply it to anything else ever again those why words can never be used in that format ever again for any other any other isn't thing. it isn't it in some so. way putting light back <laughs> onto the original poem in some ways because people are now looking back into the original poem and reading the original poem that may not have already read it i, mean, I don't think it's something we need to like teach and History class. Why you don't we think we should it? teach people about the Holocaust or Nazis? Is that well, what you're or saying? Like, and teach it why, so we can learn from it. I don't. I don't agree with that. I. I'm going to get a Jewish <laughs> person. Is what I'm going to get. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you're Jewish and I you're listening to this and you'd like to tell me, uh, and you agree with Dylan, yeah. Well, no, even if you don't agree, I guess don't just uh, tell me. Come up. And, and I'm very open. I'm like extremely Go open for me to understand and to learn why. Like why I'm incorrect about this. It's just from my viewpoint of yeah. what my current view is for this. I'd love to learn and be corrected if it is the reason. Yeah, I I do recall seeing like one or two people mention it on Twitter. 
during the presentation, but I don't think there was like a massive outcry or anything. I mean, it doesn't have to be a massive outcry. I just, oh. I mean, I'm I'm not looking <laughs> to jump on the fucking bandwagon here. I was like, this is weird. Other people, I guess, you've seen a couple of people think it's weird. There's a couple of people that think it's weird. You know, like it's the world we live in. There's there's many people. I know we haven't talked about this, and it probably won't. It's it's not really re- it's sort of relevant, but like there's often times where obviously I play through the entirety of Horizon Zero Dawn, right? I'm like, there's nothing wrong with this game. This game's great. Then I read an article a year later where someone's like, hey, this game's kind of appropriating like Native American culture and all this sort of stuff. And I, I read the t- I read the headline and I go, nah, that seems like you're, you're, you're reaching. I read the article and go, no, you're probably right. Probably right. Except for I have no, is, I I have no context for that think- at all. But, you know. Okay. It's one of those things where it's like, um... The argument, sometimes the argument isn't thing is bad, so cancel game. It can be thing is bad, but we don't need to cancel game. But it's still worth pointing out that thing is bad. So we're, we're aware that thing is probably bad. That's what I'm saying. So I'm not like, Watch Dogs trail is, is bad, for cancel for Watch Dogs. So, so, no, no, but for developers, what, de- what do developers need to do to get things quote unquote approved before they do this? Do they need to try and go to like everything that could possibly connect and be like, does this does this offend you? Like, do they need to, or does this appropriate something? Or what do what do people need to do in the current society, in current world, to make sure that what they're putting out isn't going to tread on anybody's toes or offend anybody or appropriate something? I don't need to do anything. That's what I'm saying. I'm not. I'm not trying to cancel the game. I just think it's. I. In my but the, opinion, but if it's, think that that yeah. poem should have been left alone because it's so tied to one of our darkest days in history that of all the things you could do, probably just leave that, you know? That's my point. I'm not like, hey, refix the trailer. Hey, get rid of it. I'm just going. For that, for that same point, leave then, that just because I'm, in, just just I'm interested, for that same point then, do you feel the similar way to like, uh, like Call of Duty and stuff, where they play through the wars and, and use those historical events as f- "quote unquote" fun. Uh, somewhat. Like I remember when the whole uh, World War One thing, and they're like, "Yeah, let's just drop fucking pa- whatever they were doing in the multiplayer mode." We're like, "Yeah, it's like the beaches of Normandy plus call in a care package and fucking throw a rubber duck grenade at someone." I'm like, "This is weird, right? Are we not? This is weird. This is kind of a weird thing that." kind of feels off i don't know depends okay okay i think it's obviously a case-by-case basis but i'm like could we have not touched this there's some things that i'm just like maybe they're just so tied to a very (laughs) dark place of our history as humankind that you can just leave them be because at the end of the day we're talking about granny punch and dicks and they came for the journalists well Probably isn't as serious as they came for the Jews. Came for the Jews. But the thing came is, for the, the, the bit where you keep the thing is the the granny punching dicks bit is complete is kind of separate from where the poem was used. No, but the journalist yeah. part's real. You know, the journalist part real. But even the journalist is talking about when they say journalism, they're then talking about free speech and like they're just using the journalist as representation for that. It's not yeah. just the fact that they're journalists. Look, as I as I wrote my news story for it, I just think it's tone deaf. Is what I think. I think I think I think I think if someone walked up to me and went, "Hey, this is what I'm doing for this short film," I would have gone, "No, nah, do something else. Don't like it." And I would have said exactly what I just said on here, which is, "You can tell that story without potentially uh, upsetting a, a, a group of people that have been through enough." You know, let's just. Potentially not do that. Le- leave it alone. You want to tell a story about the cabbie standing up for what's right? Let's just rewrite it. Let's re- His new monologue is, the journalist lost the ability to write. The what? A- you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't, you, just, you just start fucking some I don't think. Model. I don't think it has enough power. Then. No, but that's okay. Let's start. I think we it doesn't have enough power because the fucking poem there. works, doesn't it? When you change every word, you can change every word to something else. First, they came for the gamers. Then they came for our the Batman fans. So, 
Wow, Would Dylan, you, so insensitive. In, so yeah, I know, right? This is going really far off. If the, This is going really far off now. Would you feel the same way if somebody used this in a human rights speech in real life? No, if somebody just did don't the same touch thing. it. Just no one touch it. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. well, that's a, there's no point where someone's going, you could be like, well, Dylan, what if they used it for Black Lives Matter? I'll be like, look, that is a, that is a good cause. Don't touch the poem still. We can write a new one, everyone. We got this, you know? We, there's, there's enough. No, there's only so many combinations of words. There's, th- we can work it out, everyone. We get, we can do it. Let's just not touch that. Let's just not touch certain other things. You know, it's fine. It's public domain. So, uh, I mean, probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you think of the gameplay, Kieran? I really loved it. I was like, if you had asked me before this event. Which of the two get two of the bigger games that are coming out this year from Ubisoft would you be buying? I wouldn't have picked Watch Dogs. I would have picked Assassin's Creed, but now I feel the complete opposite way around for both of them, um, for different reasons. But I think this game looks super interesting, but just with its variety, I hope it will just the variety of gameplay choices that it alluded to. With games, you know, well, they've deleted they some things, since we last saw it. It's worth pointing out. So they have actually gone back a little bit. There's less. The last time they showed it off, they had a bit more customization, character class type thing per different person. Now, now it seems each character only has uh, select weapon types or whatever, um, some certain s- sort of skill. But you can't like. I think the last time they showed it off, you could like level each one up and all sorts of. It was, it was way more complicated. I haven't gone back and watched the, well, the thing in full. Looking. But. Looking for this, I don't know. I, for me, I guess I just hadn't paid enough attention because I didn't realize you had you could play as multiple different people. What with different skill sets? I I probably just to tune down. That's when the we whole game. The that trailer. was the whole game. You can yeah, recruit but everybody. Like, yeah, but that's my thing. Is where I'm just that uninterested in this game at the minute that I was just like filter everything. I guess like obviously it leaked before E3 last year, so maybe you're like, oh, that's fine. I think I saw the initial like teaser attention. or something for it, and then was like, I don't really care. Crazy. That's weird. <laughs> oh, no. All right, Ash has uh, been. This was his like most excited game. Of the yeah, year, I was I very keen for this game. I still got it on pre-order. I think uh, before it was delayed. Uh, yeah, it, it still looks good. Uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure about the obviously uh, the class thing. I'm not sure. I believe there was meant to be like three classes that you like leveled up or whatever. Yeah, but there was I'm, something. I'm sure we'll get like a deeper dive. A similar sort of gameplay thing to just what they did with uh, Assassin's Creed post the presentation at some point, probably the next Ubisoft forward. Uh, but yeah, I'm lo- I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it'll be cool to play, potentially do things different ways, and then you know when your character dies, you just recruit somebody else. Well, the other thing they confirmed after was that you can turn permadeath on or off depending on how you want to play. Yeah, so I'd have that on. I think it'd on. be way cooler yeah. with it on. I think the with the premise and everything, it would be mm. a lot better if it was on. I don't see how you get game over. I guess maybe if you, everyone dies when you run out of people, you, you kill out of you kill your entire team. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Or everybody in London dies. Yeah. Well, whatever comes first. Um, yeah, I, I thought it looked fine. I, I neither bad or good. Simply because I didn't, I didn't think this gameplay was super any more impressive than last time. I saw we we saw the game. I was like, yeah, you take control of people. Yeah, like it was it was kind of the same as last time we saw it. As to, as far as to me, I would have preferred them to just focus on showing how you actually just like just show fewer pure gameplay for a little bit instead of like jumping around and being all this, this sort of thing. Because I'm like, that's kind of what we saw last time. They were like, hey, you can control someone. Here's someone doing a mission. Here's someone. The only new thing they showed off in this was. Um, two of the main bad guys, the the head of the not police and then the racist white lady that's keeping slaves, which is weird again. But um, they're the two bad white guys. Just, yeah, the, 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 it was weird. Um, and also the, the guy who's like... <laughs> not, this game's so weird. I just find it so weird. And Ubisoft in general is just weird with their... Okay, ever since a couple of years ago where they said our game, that one Ubisoft person in an interview was like... Asked, yep. are you get is, is Far Cry or whatever Far Cry at the time was like, is this game not political? He's like, our Ubisoft games aren't political. And then in this like in this game, they've they've got out of their way to explain. They're like, look, the city is being controlled by a form of police. However, they're not actually real police. So 
there may be real world a, I mean, lies. Let's be honest. They 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 set up. They did all wrote all that before, obviously, the events of this year. Oh, I know. Uh, it's just I can't. It's so. I just it annoys me because at a, at the core concept, uh, Watch Dogs and this game in particular, if they had the balls, they could actually do such a interesting story if they actually committed to to saying something but they're just too scared to scare off any sort of market like any sort of uh, I mean, potential it, consumer they're like no we don't want to annoy when anyone it started, when it started it felt like it was because it was like a post Brexit like kind of statement on suddenly you got rid of all these people you kept all the foreigners out yeah they got they shit. got asked about that when the game got announced they were like oh so is this game about Brexit and the, the creative director was like no no it's it's not about Brexit. It just looks like it could be. It's like just <laughs> commit, just fucking say. Oh, it just annoys me. It's just it's what just trying to make. It's just because it's like fucking just why? Because you can tell that you can tell the creative types uh, on the certain development teams obviously have something they want to say, but it's the the overhanging Ubisoft that's like pulling the reins, and it annoys me. So no yeah, end. The company is not going to make a political statement, but the individuals are looking on the fucking game. Fucking so. stop. It's, it's the time. Stand up. Do something with your lives. Uh, so the next game that showed off was Brawlhalla. That's uh, coming to mobile. Don't really care. Cool. Came out two years ago. The only thing ago. I thought was cool about this, and I, I guess for me, I don't play mobile games, but that you could customize how the buttons were on your mobile. That it wasn't like a lock screen. You could kind of move and change how yeah. the buttons were. I mean, you can probably use a controller that was a cool these feature. days. So. True. Plug a PlayStation. Uh, then they showed another two more mobile games. So you got Might and Magic, Era of Chaos. This is a weird trailer because... I cannot figure out if the reviews they were showing on screen were real or just they did like fake reviews and were like, look, look what Timmy Tommy on the internet said. Our game's great. And I'm like, this is weird. I mean, I'm sure they get enough user reviews on like the iTunes or whatever that they probably couldn't just pull ones that sound good. It seemed like <laughs> a lot. There was like so many good reviews and I'm like, that's weird. Um, the ne- the well, you look at any mobile game, they have like thousands of reviews. Do so. they? I guess I don't know. Really. Yeah. Well, anytime I look at something, it's normally like because a lot of these games like pop up like after you play. Like, oh an hour. yeah, get hey, free credits. Just five and, stars. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and the third and final mobile game they showed was Tom Clancy's Elite Squad, which they announced last year. They showed off another cinematic trailer for it here. It's still just as weird. Still just as why the fuck is Sam Fisher being pushed into being only in a mobile game? Whoever did his voice in this sounded weird. The whole game just weird. That's that's my thoughts on that. Remember when they announced that last can year? I, everyone was I, like, Sam Fisher, fuck yeah. And then it was revealed as a mobile game and everyone flipped their lids. That was great. Can yeah. I say, anybody you expected Splinter Cell to be in this show case were, I think, not really Crazy. thinking because we, we already knew that they were going to be talking about Watch Dogs Legion, Assassin's Creed, and then Far Cry got leaked. And you're like, okay, there's the big three games for this showcase. There's no way they're going to be talking about anything else. Um, and yeah, that even, you know, we didn't see anything about Beyond Good and Evil 2. And I guess now that we know that there's a second, <laughs> yeah. um, showcase co- going to be coming out later in the year, that's why. Obviously, this show is a little bit more about the kind of the n- close future, uh, where hopefully the next one is going to be a bit more about what's going on down the line a little bit. And hopefully, Splendor Cell is featured there. Well, you can only hope. Um, then they did a trailer for Rainbow Six Siege, showed a bunch of streamers, and it was basically just celebrating the five years the game's been out. The only person I saw in it that I recognized Crazy. was one second of Paladin Ammo was in it. Everyone else I did not recognize from the, the yeah, streamers true. or whatever. I was like, oh, the one second of someone I know. Um, then they had a trailer for Hyperscape, which of course was we briefly talked about last week or a week before. I don't remember. Time flies. Um, the trailer they showed off during this, though, explained the story of the game, which to me it was basically just Ready Player One, right? Ready I Player mean, One. That's yeah. literally what True. it is. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yep. Um, so available now on Netflix. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's literally people in VR headsets, and that's why I, I I I appreciate that they actually have a law to explain how the uh, Battle Royale World game works. continue it's happening and why it's happening. Um, obviously, we're big Apex fans, and that that game has been slowly teasing out, somewhat explaining how and why they they keep having their characters revived, but they've never fully done it. But that's kind of part of it. If you're into Apex's story, they string it along. At least here, they're like, here's how it works, whatever. Call of Duty doesn't make any sense. They're just like, you die next time you're a different character. You look exactly the same as the last character, but it's a different character. Um, then they showed up some more gameplay. It's now an open beta on PC. So if you want to download it, give it a go. You can uh, do such a thing. Are you going to try this out at, at all, Kieran? 
Maybe I'm not a hundred percent. Like it looks, it looked interesting, and what I've read about and heard about, it's a very fast, um, it's very fast and very uh, movement based, which I think is kind of cool. But I'm not sure. I'm still not a big fan of battle royale. So you loved the PUBG back in the day. Yeah, PUBG was fun, but that was when battle royale still felt kind of new and different and janky as fuck. <laughs> yeah, good exactly. times, good old 100%. days. Yeah, um, right. so the next right. thing they had was Phil Spencer coming out and he was like, everything gets smart delivery. And I, I thought this was personally kind of weird simply because like afterwards they were like, Far Cry confirmed uh, to have free upgrade from PS4 to PS5. Assassin's Creed confirmed to have free upgrade from PS4 to PS5. I would expect these other games potentially to have it the same. So I don't know why Phil Spencer was out here being like smart delivery. Can, like, okay. I just need to ask somebody at Microsoft, if you're listening, you might be listening. Get him a mic. Get Phil Spencer a decent mic and a decent camera, like just so it isn't <laughs> as bad quality. I think this is the second or third thing I've seen of him during this period where it's just like like garbage can quality for both his yep. mic and camera. Do we, so, do we really want him in high quality reacting to Carrie and burping? I mean, yeah. That was a one good yeah. thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. She had, had a better mic than him during the, the Volvo thing, I thought. So PlayStation yeah, wins. works for Sony. Yeah, PlayStation wins. There you go. <laughs> Um, then they showed off Assassin's Creed Valhalla <laughs> so we, we finally got our official uh, proper gameplay for this not two seconds of in-game engine finally. stuff whatever they teased out last time um, although this this thing started and I'm like oh my god we're still gonna have to deal with the fucking male uh, what's the character's name uh, Ivor Evor whatever the hell? I can't even Ivor yeah, Ivor yeah, yeah. Ivor. Um, I, when they started this I'm like oh just can we have some footage of the female Ivor and then they switched over I was like oh good because I was like we're onto our third trailer. Can we can we not get some some time here? Um, the one interesting thing I'll say with that to get out of the way before more thoughts on the gameplay is mm. obviously Odyssey, you picked one or both. Like you you picked one character and then the other one was still in the game, but it was uh they mm-hmm. became the villain. So if you pick the male character, the uh, female was the villain and, vi- and vice versa. Uh, I mean, look, honestly, Ash, at this stage, um, I would be willing to bet some high amount of money that you ain't playing that game. So um they <laughs> the, the thing they're doing with this one though is that you can open up the menu and you can tap up and at any point in the game you can switch between male or female you can just switch whenever you want now that leads to a lot of interesting questions because so far they've made to try and explain how like canonically there's different uh male or female assassins but just being able to switch on the fly i guess the only way they can sort of explain this and have it make sense within the law is to literally go well the animus is confused i guess like the I, animus I, has <laughs> found the animus has found data to say that it that ivor could have been male or female there's yeah, no kind something of like there's no def, yeah. definite answer i guess is the yeah. way they're gonna have to explain that sure um but what, what do you think of the gameplay kieran looked okay um I didn't love it. Like it was anything that kind of blew me out of my seat or kind of pushed me to to really be excited. Um, it looked it looked yeah okay. I guess is the best thing I can say about it. Ash, any more excited than yeah. that? Or? <laughs> yeah, I liked it. Uh, I like the idea of building up your settlement and like taking over England. I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, that obviously they went pretty like hardcore in depth uh, after the stream. Uh, when I went back to sleep, so uh, <laughs> I mean, it looks, hey, hey, looks like an Ashley, Assassin's Creed game. Yeah. Hey, actually, just in case you just just minor spoilers, the Vikings don't actually take over England. You um, sure? Yeah. Maybe in this this vo- maybe this version of the world, the, the Vikings take over England. Okay, that'll be interesting. That'll be an interesting choice. I'm pretty sure most of these games. Yeah, <laughs> and then all, all the English people won't end up being whiny whiny palms. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Like big wow! Arcade couch ash strikes again, eh? Just uh, mm-hmm. um, well, I mean, if the Vikings did take over, then England probably would have taken over the entire world. So I mean, it's it's probably a good thing they didn't. Um, England did. England did for the you know there was a large extended period where British Empire they would have kept in everything. control of the entire world. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. They were like, yeah, after a while, they eh, we just. Thank America, you. we'll pretend that we let you have a civil war to, you know, to, to, to you threw us out, but we were leaving anyway. No, nah, I've seen Hamilton. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure they beat <laughs> you. Pretty wow, spoilers. 
spoilers for history. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, technically, my Assassin's Creed Odyssey t- was history as well. You know, that's what I'm saying. Um, no, I thought it looked okay. I th- I think the the thing that does me is so after the stream they release uh, a bunch of 4K screenshots where the game looks a lot more stunning. And I'm like, what are they showing on stream? Is it just the video we're watching or are they not showing the, the high end quality? Because it doesn't look like, I feel like I'm I'm watch, I'm hoping I'm watching like the PS4 version and then the PS5 yeah. slash PC version will look a lot better because there's a lot of it where I'm like, this is kind of rough. Now I played Odyssey on my PS4 and I was like, this doesn't look great and it doesn't look anywhere near as, as good as I've seen other people post Twitter videos about whatever else. And I know for a fact, I looked up video and whatever else, Odyssey on PC was definitely the most beautiful way that you could play the game. If, if you didn't have PC high specs, Xbox Series X was the second best. And then it kind of went down road from there to PS4 Pro, Xbox, PS4, whatever, whatever, whatever. So again, looking at this, I'm like, what am I looking at here? Because this doesn't even look as good as Odyssey, you know? So that, that was the confusing no, part. It, there were still some parts where, there was stuff like where uh, Ivor was shooting arrows at, roofs to try and light them on fire but the effect didn't like it just looked really kind of bad for me like it didn't seem like the 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 fire naturally caught a light on the buildings or anything and then you know a couple like shots later all of a sudden the whole village they were in was on fire and it looked pretty good but i was like how did, does it naturally get to this or what's the you know what is your overall style for this game and how, how good actually is it yeah, I'm I'm intrigued by the um, the setting and you know like what you can do. I'm a bit of I see certain they they explain certain things in this where it's like looks like a still too much side quest content. And I'm like just calm the fuck down. Like like I'm not to get into the whole uh, long games too long type thing again. But I'm like just let's just fucking. They used to be a lot shorter. These fucking Assassin's Creed games. They used to the give you a hundred is- feathers to find, and they were still shorter than what they are now. You know. The big thing, the big thing about it is now that then they announced this is going to be a big game, and then they announced the release date, and I instantly went, "Oh yeah, I'm not playing this." Yeah, it's two this days is, after. Uh, this is not <laughs> whatever it is. Yeah, I think it's two days before or two days oh, after. after. But I'm like, yeah. I'm like, jeez, yeah, I'm like, nah, there's no way I'm playing this game. Nah, sorry, you've and just uh, yeah, picked a terrible release date. You're definitely going to replay it. You think Cyberpunk's coming out that date? I don't think so. <sighs> Ash doesn't, Ash doesn't think anything's coming out. He's like, PS5? No, nah. no nothing's coming out. Any games? No. Nah, until it's in stores, it's not coming out. The, the thing, is, the thing is with Ash is Kingdom like, Hearts 3, still not out. <laughs> <laughs> but it's in stores. The, the, the way Ash talks about is stuff getting delayed indefinitely, you'd think he has like a massive backlog he's trying to work through and he just keeps hoping that nothing comes out so he can beat it. But that's not what's happening. He's just no. like, it ain't happening. I'm helping everybody else out. <laughs> Now you're just thinking of yourself as this fucking angel of everyone. Look, everyone <laughs> wants these games to come out. Kieran, do you want Cyberpunk to come out? Oh my god, I want Cyberpunk to come okay, out. Okay, so you're so not badly. helping him. <laughs> 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 he wants it out, right? Um, yeah, I mean, look, I'm probably the same. Look, I, my my hype level for Cyberpunk is nowhere near Kieran's. Like, I, I'm 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 just at like a soft medium on that. Mm. Uh, my Assassin's Creed hype level is below that. So if I had to pick one game to play, it's going to be Cyberpunk. But I I think a lot of people who would play Assassin's Creed normally are probably going to be playing Cyberpunk. Like I'm sure there's some um, loose eggs in that bowl. But this this has the feeling for me as when Tomb Raider was coming out alongside Fallout Four, and everybody was like. To, come come on, Tomb Raider. What are you doing? What are you doing here? No. And it didn't go so well for Tomb Raider. Um, and then the last thing they announced. Oh, I, I think, yeah. I will say, I think it's interesting they didn't announce dates. Obviously, they didn't announce dates for PS5 and PS4, uh, Xbox uh, One. So maybe there would be a delay. And then everybody, there'll be like a double, a second wave of people. I think they're in. just doing a bunch of lies because they're like, oh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla is <laughs> coming to November 17th for PS4, Xbox, P- PC, and next gen releases sometime soon after. I'm just like, I'm surprised. They're out I'm by surpri- then. I Don't would be fucking so lie. surprised if, if but around about that 20th of November period, if there is neither console out yet, that's kind of almost worrying. 
Look, I, I would say that one of the consoles is either out around that time and the next one's probably like the week after or something like that. You know, like it's definitely around that time. So when they're like sometime soon, it could be the next fucking day for all we know, you know, so they could be the same day and then like, yeah, an hour later after you pick up your copy, psych, you know, like I don't know what they're saying. That's everything they're doing for this, everything they announced there. And then even with the Far Cry one, they're like, it's it's coming to everything on February 18th. So here's, here's your gap. November 17th is the PS4 and Xbox Series X out. Apparently not. February 18th, is it out? Apparently, yes. Your... So, Ashley, um, your predictions Sorry, yeah. of March is... Uh, Wrong. There you go. Bit outside that window, bud. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. True. I mean, I'll still win on Price is Right rules, but whatever. On Price is Right <laughs> rules. <laughs> is right rules. <laughs> Fucking it's Granny right. Ash over oh, here. Yeah. Like, bring out my Price is Right rules. As long as it hits 20... As long as it hits 2021, I think I win, so. No, that's not, no, <laughs> no. Um, I think if it hits January 2021, we're even. I mean, it's okay. halfway between both. So, <laughs> oh, I can so. concede that. But I'll, I'll, <laughs> you I'll, see I'll, that. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll believe I won, though. You're going to believe you won even <laughs> when they come out in November, so. I don't think it's going to make Yeah, any because I... I it's my. It's thanks to me that it got released. Oh early. my god! Uh, so the last thing that they announced was Far Cry Six, which leaked. Uh, I don't know, like four or five days before the event, I think. Um, so yeah, they man. didn't Bad show like Ubisoft in typical. Yeah, in typical Ubisoft fashion. Would it be fashion, a Ubisoft event if something wasn't something leaked? Leak no, show. sorry, sorry. It wouldn't be a Far Cry event or leak. release if it didn't leak yeah. before. I'm pretty sure every Far like Cry two- has. I feel like every Far Cry after two has leaked, or maybe after three yeah. has leaked. So. Yeah, um, all the recent get some bet NDAs or something. I don't know what the hell they do, but um, so it's as I said, coming February twenty eighteenth, twenty twenty one to to all the consoles in Stadia. Um, they showed a weirdly they showed like the opening credits first, which I'm like, this is weird. But then they showed a proper premiere trailer, which in typical Far Cry fashion focuses solely on the villain of the game instead of the uh, who you'll actually be playing as. But that's what they always do for the these games. Um, personally, meh. I mean, I, I haven't played the last couple Far Cry, so I, I, I'm definitely not the target audience to get hyped about a new Far Cry announcement, and if, this wasn't doing it for me. I would so. be hyped if there's, like, because I like the conspiracy theories that It's it not is. true. It can be proven wrong like very that quickly. That game's theory. set in, like, so the theory is that everyone reckons the kid in this, the, the son of, um the uh, Anto- Anton Castillo, Castillo, who's played by uh, Giancarlo yep. Esposito, who's the dictator of this fictional country of Yara. Um, his uh, son, uh, everyone's presuming that's going to be um, Vars, Vars from, from Far Cry 3. And that was a good theory when the poster and everything leaked. However, that game, Far Cry 3, is set in like the 80s or whatever. And in this, he's listening to an MP3 player. So I just don't think... The t- we don't see what we don't see the MP3. We see he's got headphones in. That could be a run of the mill Walkman. No, like that could be a tape deck. No, I'm pretty sure they showed it was like an MP3 player or a phone or something. Oh, Listen, okay. I don't know. Maybe there's some time travel element involved. Sure. Why not? They've got they've set one game in the primal area and one in the apocalyptic future. So anything is possible. Could be. I mean, I I didn't like. I didn't hate one the idea. In the- of it being like a neon eighties, yeah. I didn't hate the idea, but I just think that the the reveal kind of quickly squashed it. But who knows? Um, what do you think of the the whole opening that this thing though, Karen? I mean, it's good. I think um, Far Cry is ride or die upon its villain character. Like its villain character kind of has to be good. So. Um, I think it's off to a good start. It just depends on how much he's actually in this game um, and showing you what is your character side of things and stuff like that. I think it would be interesting. I would really love to be playing on the bad side in this one, actually, to be perfectly honest. I think it would be cool to be playing on the, the dictatorship side, maybe, or being able to choose sides, but yeah. Ash? Yeah, it was a very good cutscene. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Not much else, <laughs> obviously, not much else there to say. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I saw lots. Of, I, I mean, I just don't, I, I, I don't get it. Like, you know, when you see people getting excited about something on Twitter and you're just like, I don't get it. Like, and the thing is, I've seen lots of people 
the, the, the key reason for excitement is they're like, Giancarlo Esposito fucking love Breaking Bad. I'm like, yeah, me too. <laughs> that that seems to be everyone's like key factor. They're like Giancarlo Esposito is in it. That's that. That's that means this game's gonna be great. I'm like, look, can he play a good bad guy? Yes. Cool. Will the game be more exciting than previous Far Cries? I don't know because they don't show it, and you don't see the villain for half of these fucking games. Fucking Far Cry Four, they had Troy Baker at the start. He disappeared for like three pagan quarters of men. Good yeah. old pagan men just disappears. So it's not like the bad guys in them forever. And I, I think the same was true for that last one they did uh, in America or whatever. No, um, like, he was in it a fair bit more. But still, it's not like you. I mean, there, there's a fair bit of a difference in stakes between a pastor in some church and the freaking president of a country. Yeah, it's like how often you're going to be running into the president. In some- <laughs> you know? You know, the past country. is probably going to be around a bit more. Well, you know, he's out there prophesizing nukes and stuff, but it's a whole thing. I'll say, I guess the one cool thing that could be done with this one is it is set inside a, apparently the whole game's, well, the majority of the game is apparently set inside the actual big city, which I've never done before, obviously. Like they've had, you know, little towns and whatever else you could go through, but this would be the first Far Cry where the majority of it's, Inside a, I guess a tight, it's, tight streets and rooftops potentially, and th- these sorts of things may come into play. I guess buildings, yeah, yeah. lots of buildings and stuff it like could that. Could be more so akin blow to blow up a building uh, and it's ruined for the rest of the game. That'd be cool, sure. That'd be pretty dope. That'd be super dope. You can't, you can't um, do one mission anymore because you destroyed the building. You've destroyed the building that the mission objective happens in. Oh goodness! <clears> it would <throat> definitely have more of that dying light feel to it than. Uh, Speaking of Dying Light, where is that game? I think that's cancelled at this stage, to be honest, but that's fine. Yep. Um, now, because I'm, I've mentioned every fucking hot take under the sun, this this is not one I have a horse in because uh, I uh, I never thought of it, but I have seen it come up across several people I follow on Twitter have brought it up who were like, the pre-order bonuses for this game are you get a wiener dog called Liberated Turizo, which... It means sausage or something, I think. And then you get a disc launcher called Discos Los Locos. Discos Locos. And I've seen lots of people um, point out, they're like, this is stupid. And I have no horse in this race <laughs> because obviously I'm not of any sort of uh, Latina, Latinx, Latina. How do you, I don't even know how the proper, what are they? Latinx. Latina, yeah, Latinx. I was like, what is the... Which apparently is, uh, people get upset about people saying that now too. I'm like, it's just the gender neutral term. Um, but I've seen people complaining. I'm like, I don't have a horse and race because it never made me, upset me, obviously. But I've seen people post videos and stuff and be like, look, we're sick of this shit. Why do you just turn our language into a fucking... And I kind of get it now that I've had a point out. It's like, Discourse Locos. <laughs> like, Pre-order bonus. Get the disc launcher called the Discourse Locos. Like, it's kind of like turning the language, I guess, into a um, a joke or being used for different sort of things. So uh, I would say at the end of this whole stream, uh, there was lots of people excited for games. And then there was lots of people going, Ubisoft... Why'd you do that? Why'd you why why why'd you why'd you have to do that? So, I mean, ups down. Some people love it. Some people don't like it. If if you're like me and you have no horse in that, that race, that dog is cute. That dog is cute. That's that's my thing. I'm like the dog is cute. That's what I mean. This, but this Can is me. This is that? this is me being open, right? This is what I'm talking about. When people always get up in arms, I see that pre-order bonus. I go, that's a cute puppy. I if I play the game, I want that. So for a hot thirty minutes, I was like, that's cool. I want that. And then I open up Twitter half an hour later and I see like 10 people I follow all going, this is upsetting me because of reasons. And I go, well, you do have the right and I will listen to you. And that's all we should be doing these days, everyone. If you, if you, <laughs> especially if it's, it's got a horse in the race. I don't have a horse in this race. Fucking white dude. I can't get upset about the fucking thing either way. But I'm like, I'm willing to listen to why... The cute sausage dog who I spent 30 minutes being excited about in a majority of an event, which I would say was kind of meh. And then at the end, I'm like, oh, cute puppy. And then it got ruined. <laughs> Damn, he's all. Um, so that's the, uh, that was Far Cry. Any uh, wrapping up thoughts on Far Cry, uh, Far Cry or Ubisoft or? 
I thought it was it was not the worst event of the the E three months, and it's not the best of them. Well, but, it's not over know, yet, so E three. I mean, if they hadn't have said there was going to be another one, I think we'd be more even more disappointed. But obviously, there's another event sometime in the near future. I would imagine. Yeah, what are they going to show on that? Uh, probably. Gods and Monsters, probably, uh, and whatever other game they're working on. Uh, Gods and Monsters, Rainbow, Beyond Rainbow, Good and Evil. Yeah, the Rainbow Six Quarantine, quarantine game. Yep. Skull and Bones. <laughs> nah, that game's dead. If there's any game to say a game is dead, Skull and Bones is so dead. It is dead in the water. It is a sunk ship. Beyond it Good and Evil so 2? sunk. Yes, You're I think it's possible. me from my yeah no definitely. I think Beyond Good and Evil Two should be there. Mario even though they announced that game way too early. Even just another story trailer, just to say okay, we're still working on it. Yeah, it's I think they do thing. need to. That's a piece. I think it would be a really dumb right. decision for Ubisoft if they don't work out, don't have another game like kind of partnership with Nintendo coming up. That'd be you know I think man. Um, so much. I don't know how people are going to handle with the the character from the first one being the bad guy in the second one. That's a good point, actually. That is a. I don't think people will be able to handle it. It'll Mm. it'll just send the internet crazy. So wait, do you think it's going to have the same effect as the Last of Us has had? No, because there's. Oh no! no. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's not my Jade. Rewrite the game. So my Jade. I can't believe they made made her a bad guy. Terrible. (laughs) This is some SJW shit. I'm starting. I'm starting a petition to get this rewritten. (laughs) <laughs> oh dear. Um, so that'll do it for the, this week's episode of RK Couch um, thank you all for listening if you like get to the end of this episode and you're like um, is Dylan like leaving Explosion Network after arguing with fucking Kieran and Nash all episode the answer is no because I'm used to it so that's fine um, you can, you can <laughs> <laughs> no, my, 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 my. Just, to, just to point out <laughs> Ashley was swinging at everybody I got called a whiny pom at one point and insinuated <laughs> that if Vikings had won I'd be different so you know I, I, I mean it's true <laughs> I mean Arcade Ashley's just swinging punches left and right he's just no care for what he's hitting and if I if I um, give the people what they want, I always think that if I didn't bring up this these things on the show, if I wanted to, then well, there's a million other shows that can yeah. just suck company dick. I be, you know, no, the good. thing is, the thing is, I would be disappointed in us if one of us had a disagreement or one of us wanted to push the the conversation forward and we didn't bring up our opinions on it. I'd be more disappointed if we didn't do that. So I'm glad that we can, you know, feel um, safe enough and kind of open enough to to be honest about opinions and discuss them and look for learning and educational moments about our thoughts and views. Very good. Well said. Well said. Cheer, cheer. Or uh, hear, hear. I mean, whatever thing you'll say. Uh, <laughs> you can find us on Twitter by heading to explosionnetwork.com slash Twitter. Take you to a Twitter list with all of our Twitters. Uh, you can let us know on Twitter or by mailing mail at explosionnetwork.com with the subject line RK Couch what your thoughts are on the many things that were brought up uh, this episode. Um, yeah. Do that. Um, yeah, we- <laughs> there's, there's lots. There's, there's lots. <laughs> um Probably be a lot calmer next week. Who knows what could happen these days, to be honest, though. Uh, until next week, though, uh, we'll be a shorter time because we're recording this one late. So that's like by the time we get around, oh, it's a, a week before. Quicker. We're here quicker. Uh, we'll see you here next week. Same time. No, normal time. Sorry. Same couch. Boy. Regular time. Regular time. Same couch. Boy. Hey. Don't forget you can subscribe to the show wherever you're currently listening and you can drop a review if you can. Find more great shows like this and more content over at ExplosionNetwork.com and please consider supporting us for as little as a dollar over on our Ko-fi page by heading to ExplosionNetwork.com slash support. Thanks for listening.